Hello, this is Casper, and welcome to another Braco tutorial. Today we'll be looking into creating our own kind of news section in Umbraco. Uh, if, for example, if you have a client that says, "Oh, you know, I like my own little blog site or something like that," then uh, that's what we'll be creating today. So, of course, we'll start up Visual Studio, and we'll just continue on building the from the project that I, we've been using the uh, previous movies. Um. Ah, there we go. Right, so let's just start up our test application, and I'll show you how to do this. Right, Control F5, just to open it up, and there we go. And of course it will try and open up the exact path to the file, but that doesn't work, since Umbraco has some custom URL um, mapping slash pipeline. Um, okay, so, going to Umbraco. And right now we have, you know, the home page, the second home page, the third home page with a page underneath. I'm just going to this, delete this third home page. There we go. So the steps for creating any any new content is, of course, going to the settings first and creating a new document type. Right now we have one called home. Let's create a new one. We'll call it um, news overview. Uh, over you. There we go. When you create something like this, you always want to have a holder and then its child items. And I'll show you what I mean with this in a minute. Um, this is just an overview of all the news items. And of course, we want a matching template for that. So we'll just create it in a minute. And boom, now that's done. Okay, so we will need to do two things. One, of course, every time we create a new one, it will have a name, so that's fine. Um, but also, we want a. Um, some body text, for example, so we'll just make a news overview, then body text, which is the name I'll call it, and it'll of course camel case the alias, um, and then we'll just grab this as a rich text editor, um, and put in site information. There we go. And we want, of course, to say that home can create a child node of type news overview. We'll save that. And then we'll go into content and home page and create and then a news overview. And this one we'll just call called news, for example. And the page title is uh, news. Well, yeah, anything. And. Uh, Yep, news overview body text. We just write this is the page where all our news items will be displayed. And we'll save and publish it. There we go. Uh, yeah, so if we just grab this a minute and go to our website, and see, of course, we have our news page. And I'm not going to bother styling this, to be honest. It's just, yeah, too much hassle. Um, yeah, and uh, we tried to ac uh, ac access it here, but you see it just comes up with a, uh, a hashtag. Um, the reason for that being is, it says here, link to document, oops, this document is published but not in the cache. And what it means in the cache is somewhere in the database that we are using right now, and Braco has everything in an XML uh, cache, you know, extensible markup language uh, cache, and so uh, it doesn't update from there all the time, it only updates uh, maybe every 5 or 10 minutes or something like that. You can s set it up all there in the umbraco.config if you want to, uh, and you can read more about it on the, the Umbraco website about what you can do in there. But basically what we just do right now is just save and publish again, and we get our news node. We could just go here, but of course to show you that it works, just go here, you can see in the bottom left now, down here, it says news, so we click, and we're on our news page. But of course we have nothing there yet, so we go back to our template, go to our news overview, layout is equal to null, we do not want that, we want our layout to be equal to the master, so we save that. And now if we go back and reload, of course we have our navigation, which was part of our master page. So let's go into our news overview, so let's say a couple of, and as you see it updated itself. Let's say one more thing we'd like to have is uh, let me just see a master a minute render bodies inside the container because everything in here will be inside the uh, container fluid container. 
normally if you're going to create a, a website where you want the background colors of each div to f uh, expand 100% but have the content centered in the middle with a s uh, fixed width you use the uh, you wouldn't put the uh, container fluid and container around the render body so uh, actually we might as well take ours away now and just and uh, do good practice from the start and uh, just pull this back a minute there we go actually needs to go back there we go uh, I'm a bit uh, freaky with all this indentation I, I find that it makes the code a lot easier to read if a div is uh, on top on top or underneath another div it's just my personal opinion anyway we can go to home now and we can just say uh, from here container and uh, we'll just stop the div here and there um, just fix this there we go there we go just makes everything so much cleaner um, actually, we might as well take all this code while we're at it and just put it into our news overview. Why this? Why this arrow sometimes comes? I have no idea, but don't think about it. There we go. Contain fluid. Current page dot name. We want that. Uh, a break tag. Current page dot, and we called it news. I think it was news overview. Um, body text if I remember correctly oh, there we go let me just check that a minute just to be safe document types master and news overview and it was news overview body text and that's what we called it yeah there we go okay uh, so yeah we'll link to that and the and there's no image here so we'll just delete that okay so now on our page we have again it says news and then this is where all our news items will be displayed let's just remove the break tag a minute we don't need it um... yeah and uh... Oh, we, yep we did set that and that okay so of course we go to home page and that that still looks the same as before because we just did it on the page itself with the container and container fluid instead of uh... yeah doing it around the render body but actually that looks a bit not good with the uh, break tags. Let's just remove that a minute. There we go. Okay, much better. So now we have our news item. Now we need some child nodes. So what we will do is we'll go to master uh, document type and create a new one. And uh, yeah, okay, you can just do this two ways. You could just create a new document type under the master, or what I like to do sometimes as well is create it under the news overview. Um, the only difference being that if you create it under master then everything that you create will inherit the generic properties like the page title and the site name from the master template but we might as well inherit from the news overview because the only thing that has is uh, the news overview body text um, and we could use that actually but the uh, the alias is not that good and it's only one thing so we don't have to so, uh, but it can be good also just to create it, if you, even if you know you're not going to use it just for sakes. Um, but that's you know j just for so so you, your mind knows. But that's up entirely up to you. But we might as well just create it here in the master. So just create and we'll create just a, a news, just a news. We'll create it. And we have news and we want to say that a news overview. Then go to structure. Got, got an email there. And we want to say that. A news overview can create news items as its child. So we have that. Let's just uh, go to templates. Now we have a news, and that we do want under our master template still. There we go. And yeah, okay. So now we want to give this some properties. So let's see. We already have a name for it. That's the name we're going to call it when we create it. So what would a news uh, need? Need some text. So we'll just say uh, news text, for example. That'll come up there. We'll uh, have a uh, rich text editor and put that site information. Don't know right now what else uh, it actually need. May there could maybe be an image. Yeah, okay. 
Um, we can put an image here, but also actually we can use the rich text editor to just put in a uh, an image. So we'll do that for now. So yeah, that's just basically it. So let's just go to the template. And of course here we want to build our template, so we'll do the uh, oh, no, the div class is equal to container dash fluid I can spell or come on or type. There we go. And finish off the div and we want another div of class container oh, come on and finish off the div. Right, now we'll leave it at that and then we'll go into Visual Studio and continue from there. Again, bad habit. I need to get away from it. Right, let's see, why is it not showing? Let's just refresh a minute. There we go, News and News Overview. Just include those in our project and go to News. So we have our container here and in there we would uh, when we when we query for something, I like to do it up here. But uh, in here, we don't actually want to query for something. In here, we just want to uh, first have a. Actually, let's do something else. Let's go to Bootstrap a minute. Bootstrap. Uh, great, great thing. And go to Components and see what it has. There was a load of glyphicons and stuff like that. Alignment, divider, it's probably something we could use here that looks very good. Let's see a minute. Something to display some new stuff. What could we use? Brand image, nope. No pagination, nope, that's always another thing. A jumbotron, nah. Image, thumbnail image, that we could also use a bit later. Um, doesn't look like there's much here for us actually. Um, no. Let's just go up a minute and go to CSS. There's a lot of stuff there as well. Let's see, I think it's in table. No, it's not tables. Maybe perhaps it's forms. Um, I can't really find anything here. Okay, we'll just uh, build something from the ground up. What we want to do is, oh, back in Visual Studio, we'll go to um, div class is equal to. Let's do a column dash lg dash I don't know eight. What this basically means, if you don't know Bootstrap, Bootstrap works with a 12 column system, so columns are the ones that go from the top to the bottom and not the other way. And uh, it, ha it has a, a whole site will always contain 12 columns, so this fills out, this div will fill out 8 out of 12 columns, so 8 12th. Uh, and then, well, what's left, there's only 4 out of 12 left, so the next div will, of course, be... Um, Col dash lg dash four, and what col just means column, lg it means the site size. So um, basically, lg is bigger than twelve hundred pixels. Then uh, afterwards, you have um, md, which is I think it's one thousand and twenty-four pixels. So that means between one thousand and twenty-four to one thousand two hundred. And you ha then you have SM, which is uh, they're not that SM, but small, uh, which is 768 to 1024. And then we have excess, which is extra small, which I think is just something of between 400 and or something like that. But it's it's how that works. But right now we're just going to set to LG because we're going to be running our site in full size. Uh, yep. So. In, a cont in this container, we'll have one div on the left, so we'll use the bootstrap to pull it left. And then we'll have this one on pull right. We don't actually even need to do that since they'll always occupy 12, so we might just pull that left as well. So anyway, here, this will be the main content, so if, for example here, we'd have a h2 tag, 
uh, with a current page dot name and then we'd have uh, some body text which would be current page dot news text I believe we called it there we go and over here we might want uh, we'll do a couple of h4s for example here we could do uh, and now I'm going to use the model dot content a minute so bear with me model dot content because then you can see what a con what it contains not all this answers us or self but also sort of children but let's for example there's the create date which returns a date time of I publish content I publish content is um, um, braco but it returns a date time we'll take that uh, and then of course we'll say uh, created at and then we can do another h4 and say um, last edited and then at model dot content dot uh, I think there's a last document type ID nope what was that up there no that's the ID item type yeah level name parent path properties template ID URL URL name ah it wasn't update date there we go, last edited, last... Uh, let's just... yeah, okay, uh, edited is fine. Um, yeah, I guess that uh, that should be fine, actually. Uh, so here we have uh, a sweet little, like, no uh, news node. Let me just make sure we actually did call it news text a minute. Uh, I don't remember s this stuff very well. Just refresh. All our code is now in here. Document type, master, and news and we called it news text. Yep, we did. Okay. So that's all good now. So if hold oh, so, uh, there we go. So if we go into here and uh, reload, of course there's nothing here. Basically what we want to do now is we want to list all the news uh, yeah, each news in the news overview. The way we do that is kind of like we did with the uh, um with the navigation. This is basically just a navigation, we just want to pull out more things. So what we would do is, we would say... Um, call it, we'll make a variable called uh, list of news, for example, uh, which is equal to the current page, because we're, all, we're on the news overview right now, dot children. So it just gets the current page we're on, children. So what I'd like to do right now is uh, just jump down a bit. We'd like to say at and then for each, and then we'll make a variable, and then we'll call that and then this variable is news, and it's in the list of news. We see, yep, and then um, just open close brackets, and there. Yeah, sometimes it comes up with three or four errors, and you think, have I done this correctly or wrong? But just if if you've done this for enough time, you probably have done it correctly. You just need to put in the brackets, and then they'll keep Visual Studio happy. And if you see this, like I'm getting temporary generated file in the debug object, blah blah. Don't think about it. Just continue. It should go away once you restart Visual Studio. I think. Right, okay, so in here now we're running through each uh, of the items. So how would we like to display this? Well, we'd like to, uh, to say... Um, well, actually, the, now we could use Bootstrap. Uh, let me just go back a minute. I'm pretty sure there's like a panel thing we could use inside the CSS. Let me see. Panel. No, it wasn't here. Components. Panel. Oh, there's loads of panels. Ah, this is what we're looking for. Panel will one one with a heading, if possible. There we go. This is good. So we'll grab this. Just so it has we have something nice to look at. Oh, and we'll go back to this and we'll put the put the uh, code inside. So uh, panel body, uh, that, sorry this was is with a footer. We do not want a footer, we want a uh, heading. 
panel, which is a panel heading. Um, that wasn't exactly what I was looking for. This is what we're looking for, but not with group like that. Yeah, this should be fine. We just don't need. Oh come on, where are you? Panel with the, here it is. Panel with heading. Panel title. What's the difference with, with these two? Oh, okay, that's without the title, and this is with the title. For some reason, oh, okay, there's a title. Yep. So this is the one we want. Grab it, and Visual Studio, and put that in Control D to realign it. Okay, so the panel title will be an at, and then the news dot, and then here we have to uh, go on our gut again, like a current page, because this will be rendered at runtime. It does not know what it will be getting, but we'll take the news dot name, and then from here we'll say, um, let me see. I think it's um, Braco dot. Um, let's see what we have. To be I think it's trunk. Yeah, truncate. There we go. And uh, for those of you who do not know what truncate does, let me just go back a minute. Truncate here, as it says. Um, okay, it doesn't actually say anything. Let's just take it, and then we'll see here what we what the overloaded methods are. Uh, we don't know what that is. No thanks. HTML string. And yeah, this is the overloaded method we want: a uh, string and a length. A uh, string HTML int length. Yeah, any of these. Anyway, we want the name uh, or the. T this will be the at new. Oh, that's we don't even need that news dot, and then news text comma, and the length. Let's just put it to a hundred for now. And uh, yeah, so let's just try that for example. Uh, and actually, while we're at it, let's just. Um, I think it's here we put the a hyper reference equal to, and I can never remember if the h3 goes inside, but yeah, I think it does. So here, of course, we'd have to do at and then news. No, not new news dot url so that our, n our news title will link to that url so yeah let's uh, let's test it so we'll go back into here we load a page and we have news so we go into the news and why is nothing happening here news overview ah of course that's my mistake we need to actually go in, of course, and create some uh, some stuff. Otherwise, of course, it won't show. It. So we'll go to uh, we'll go to news, and then we'll right-click and create, and we'll create a news. Don't confuse this with what we're creating right now. This is just we we could even call this something else, and say this could be the uh, news section, for example. Of course, that will change the URL in here, but that doesn't matter. So, new section, and then that comes here. I don't know what this was. Yeah, that's because it thinks now we're on a news, but uh, no matter. That was just a, a minor bug, I think. Right, so let's create a news. There we go. And this could be... Um, this is my first Umbraco news item. A bit long title, but no matter. Page style will be the same, and news text will be uh, some text. And of course we could also use our media picker and upload an image to that uh, desktop. Did I... I think I put something in here. Don't remember what, what it was. Okay, well yeah, that's my background image, might as well use that. Alternative text, um, my background image. Insert it, and there we go. Although we probably should put that down. All I did there was hold down the shift button and press the enter. If you do press the enter button, it will drop it down twice. So just shift enter for once, and uh, save and publish. 
and here now we can uh, reload and here is our first item of course it doesn't look too good with ju with some text here and then a picture uh, but all, all that is just CSS and styling and you can easily do that and you can see that the uh, yeah again it says the uh, the hashtag down here which means it has not been published um, that can happen sometimes so just make sure it's published there we go reload and uh, there we go we can go in and here's just created at and last edited and as a final thing if you do want this to change because this maybe isn't too good uh, 30th of the 6th 2015 this is actually pretty much how you do it in Denmark where I live but if you wanted to change that you would go in to Visual Studio and since we know that what will be coming out of the here news since we know that these two things that come here will be of date time we can just say dot of course you have loads of things to add years and blah 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 dot date dot day day of week and get all that stuff but we want to say dot to string that's called the short date string and uh, short time string but we just want to dot to string and then in here we can put in in a string format we can put a capital D for example and that will uh, convert the value of the string or, or how it looks as you can see now 30th of June 2015 for example but if you go to Google and search for uh, date dot to string C sharp for example then you'll get a whole list of all this uh, and how you can make everything look as it should so uh, so yeah so now just to yeah we create one more just for for fun a minute create new news and a second item page title will be oh yeah I'll buy an express control s there that saves it but it doesn't publish it and that's uh, and the reason you want to do that is you could say that a content writer is allowed to write content so for example they'd be writing for your news but they wouldn't be allowed to publish and actually that will be what we cover in the next movie quickly so I'll um, so yeah that's actually all for now um, let's just put in some text here so it looks nice so publish reload so here's the second item so yeah that's just all our news items and boom there we go so yeah that's it for this movie uh, um, yep see you in the next episode where we'll be talking about what you can do with the user roles so yeah thanks for watching and have a good evening